Hello again. I'm uh, switching gears for a bit here, and I'm making another politics video, which I haven't done in some time, but uh, WarCorp666 seems to have challenged me to respond to his video on abortion. Apparently he was not expecting me to make a response, but uh, here's my response. Uh, first of all, Mr. WarCorp, I'm going to suggest that you take some Valium pills, because if you don't, I'm afraid you're going to blow a fuse here. But, uh, anyway, uh, skipping into it. Where I draw the line is, is when somebody's personal viewpoints, whatever they may be, fuck with the lives of someone else, anyone else. Yeah, I kind of have a problem with that, too. That's uh, kind of what this is all about, though, isn't it? What I do not support is when you tell us not uh, one group of people they are second-class citizens and don't deserve the same rights and privileges that you enjoy. Yeah. I don't particularly like that either. That's why I don't like slime balls such as Andrea Yates or Casey Anthony or any number of abortive parents who somehow think they have the right to dispose of their children as though they have no rights at all and are somehow second-class citizens. Needless to say, I don't have much tolerance for that kind of behavior. Just because your book, your God... I don't believe I said anywhere that uh, my favoring fetal rights has anything to do with uh, religion, but, um, well, of course... There tends to be a correlation between religious belief and respect for fetal rights. But my views on fetal rights and abortion have to do with human rights, and not so much religion. Now, a kind of Straussian argument could be made, I suppose, that because gynocentric bigotry and anti-fetal rights extremism are much lower among people of faith when compared to non-religious individuals, a greater degree of religion should be promoted in society so as to correct the anti-fetal rights views of the populace. But this is really more of an argument for the utility of religion than an argument for or against abortion. Or oppressing other people with your religious beliefs. Again, what does this have to do with religion? This seems like a non-sequitur fallacy to me. Of course, you were rather angry before, and it's possible you forgot to take your Valium, and so you may have blown a fuse somewhere in your head and can't think logically right now. But anyway. Abortion is a is literally a fight for the women. I mean... Men do not have a stake in this argument. Now okay, let me clarify my comments here a bit. Yes, everyone is entitled to an opinion on abortion. But your notion that men don't have a right to have an opinion on abortion since they're not the ones committing it is, frankly, to me, quite jackassonine. And when I see this kind of crap, I don't have much toleration for it, and I tend to respond in kind. Obviously, the only kind of women who would be even considering making a choice one way or the other about abortion would be of the same moral caliber of someone like Andrea Yates or Casey Anthony. Morally reasonable people, be they male or female, would never even consider such a thing to be a choice. So this would obviously only apply to women who are getting an abortion. And that being the case, your statement that only women should get to express an opinion on abortion is akin to saying that only a slave owner should get to express an opinion on whether or not slavery should be legal. And frankly, this is utter bullcrap to me. And this notion that abortion is somehow a fight for the women demonstrates extreme gynocentric bigotry to me. It implies this ridiculously ageist assumption that the fetal child is somehow less important than the mother. The only kind of women this would be a fight for are the likes of Casey Anthony. I don't think men should be in the abortion argument because we have nothing to do with pregnancy. At all. Ever. And never. Yeah, I don't think that abolitionists should have anything to say about slavery, because they're not involved in owning slaves, at all. Ever. And never. In faces, they can have an abortion because you think it's wrong. If they're not too traumatized, you know what they'll do? No, no, Mr. Warcorps. We don't have to be so angry, do we? Remember to take your Valium. They'll shove a fucking thermometer so far up your goddamn motherfucking ass! <laughs> Fools. Go ahead. Let them try. I'll just have them reported to the police then. First of all, only a minute fraction of women who get abortions do so because of rape or incest or life of the mother cases. I'm going to try to find the stats on this, but I remember a while back seeing that something like 97% of women got abortions for completely social or economic reasons. And frankly, that's completely unacceptable. I don't have anything against women who get abortions because of rape or anything like that. Okay, I feel for them. I don't think it's right to do it in that kind of case but at the same time, I understand this is not an ordinary type of situation. That said, I can simply tell them that it isn't right to get an abortion because it's a statement of fact, right? And the rest of this is simply an appeal to emotion. I wouldn't be harsh about it in that kind of case, but it's, you know, this is saying a statement of fact. Nothing wrong with that. Or tell the, um, 
girl who's 14 and is pregnant with, oh, I don't know, her dad's baby. Okay, this is bluntly ridiculous. You pull this cockamamie scenario of a 14-year-old girl getting pregnant by her dad out of your ass. What are the chances of that? This is a cop-out crap argument. What about the 95% plus of abortions that are done because some little cretins decided to chop up their kids into hamburgers rather than simply have the kids? And this includes the dickheaded boyfriends who don't want to be a dad either and just want to get rid of the kid they made. So I'm not just picking on the mothers here. Here's another thing. Tell a couple that just learned their child has a major birth defect and will probably only live six months at best. Oh, come off it. You're hiding behind these bizarre cases and you're completely ignoring the bigger issue here. To anyone who says that, uh, you know, it, it's murder, it's this, it's that, they don't have a brain. When they get a brain, then they cross the threshold from being a fucking plant! First of all, yes, it is murder. Uh, secondly, as for this charge about it not having a brain, that's not true. Granted, it's a rudimentary brain at this point, but it does have a brain and it is functioning at a basic level. And you're probably going to say, well, it doesn't have the same properties as a person it can't love and think in detail and all that. This is really kind of besides the point, because it shares an identity with a person that does. You were one of these fetal children at one point. And if you're going to be rational about it, you're going to realize that there's no precise and non-arbitrary point along the way where it magically jumps from being a not person to being a person, right? You just go back, you know, the day after it's born as a person, well, the day before it's not really any different than it is the day after, and then, well, it's a, a spectrum on there. So where on this point does it become a person exactly? If you just select a random point, well, that doesn't really reflect reality. That's pretty arbitrary. And birth, by the way, would be an arbitrary point as well. And it has to be precise as well. You can't just pick some random property and then kind of feel as to how much intelligence is the right amount of intelligence before it becomes a person. Otherwise, you don't have an actual precise definition as to what a person is or, or is not. And yes, there is the issue of before it's aware at all, but, well, sleeping people aren't aware either, and we don't think of them as non-persons. But that's not really relevant for abortion anyway, because abortions don't happen until after there's a rudimentary amount of brain activity going on. Now, I'll probably do some video in the future on all the different personhood models and why the pro-choice models fall apart for one reason or another, but I won't do that here because otherwise this is going to be a hour-long video and I don't want that. What is your solution? What, what is your solution? Ah, the argument from pragmatism, I see. I'm actually glad you asked this question because pragmatism cuts all sorts of ways. Okay, so you state these problems of like unloved children, for example, or uh, neglected children who end up really bad, or like this mother who apparently glued her kid's butt to a toilet seat. And of course you're saying this is reality, so I should simply accept it. Well, when you run across problems in life, you don't let them get in your way. You simply run them over, or find the appropriate tools to run them over. You know, if you're mugged by reality, you punch its lights out. First of all, let me make it clear that chopping children up is not an acceptable solution to social ill. This simply means that we have to find other acceptable solutions. Now, this is obviously possible because we have functioning societies that don't have abortions. Uh, Ireland or Poland, for example. So all we have to do is look at their culture and see how it works and how it works without abortion. And then once we see what works, we simply have to use a little, social et and, uh, little um, applied social science to modify our society such that it is more closely similar to theirs. Of course, this will take time, but it's obviously something that can be done, as we can see that Poland and Ireland have done it, and I have a whole myriad of ideas as to the how, so it is something that could be reasonably implemented. Uh, it, it, it's their decision. There's nothing you can do about it one way or another. Oh, of course there's something you can do about it. That's what politics is all about. Of course, you're going to have to overcome certain obstacles along the way to get there, but uh, that's nothing that a little ingenuity can't solve. The first thing we're going to have to overcome, of course, is the democratic failure that keeps abortion legal, but... Uh, that can be resolved with a little usage of corporate power. For example, we can get uh, you know have pro-life groups organized with pampers, gerbers, and huggies, and you know maybe Tyco and so forth. Arrange agreements between them to support each other, and then use that uh, corporate power to leverage the democratic process in the desired direction. Another possible idea is to promote pronatalism in the counties of, say, purple states, the Republican counties of purple states, so that over time you have a larger number of Republicans and Democrats who can elect more pro-life politicians and thus sway the political process. And you could have all those, perhaps, you know, funded, all those movements funded by the baby corporations, which will 
have a, a vested interest in having more babies born. And of course that would boost the economy as well, so it would be a win-win situation all around. I don't see how anyone could uh, complain about a modest proposal like that. And of course there's a whole myriad of ideas that uh, are right along those kind of lines. I had a video like this way back where I illustrated some of these. It's uh, Unfortunately the quality is a little low. It came out of the video maker a little screwed up, and I'm thinking of redoing it, but uh, the ideas are there if you want to see them. So I don't see where this claim comes from that uh, we can't do anything about it because, well, we simply don't know the nature of politics then. We simply have to engineer the politics to the correct specifications, and, well, then pretty much anything is possible when you do that. Mind of yours that a woman can get pregnant through much less than romantic means? Guess not. These are all unfortunate circumstances, but I still don't see why that justifies fetal rights violations. Do you? That's like saying person A did something bad to person B, and therefore person C has to take the consequences of it. That makes no sense at all. See, your whole problem here is that you, you have this uh, gynocentric bigotry. You, you don't treat the fetal child as equal to everybody else, and as a result, you say that it's all the woman here, when in reality, there are two people with equal rights. And since you don't accept that, you have the incorrect view on abortion. Have a good day now, Mr. Warcorps.